Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap for Thursday, September 26, 2024. The current time as I'm making this pre-market video is 8.06 a.m. Eastern. My name is Sam Morton, and I trade the E-mini futures, which is the symbol ES, and I do so using an approach that starts with identifying levels of probable support and resistance in the SPY, which is an exchange-traded fund that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. I found that by using the SPY as a baseline, along with the E-minis themselves and other tools, I'm able to narrow down levels that price usually reacts at, thereby giving me the opportunity to enter trades and pull points and dollars from the market. It's a process, and it's not really rocket science, but there is some math behind how I get to some of the levels. I want to show you the pre-market price action from earlier this morning when I first fired up the screens. You remember the zone up here from yesterday? What you're looking at are the levels from yesterday with all the hour after hours session turned on. You see the time, the lower right-hand corner, 735. Uh, so I just want to point out that after pulling back a little during the open session yesterday, they climbed last night. And they got right up to this zone um, that we identified over 24 hours ago. And over in the futures, they got above 5,800 and currently are very much above that area now. So today could get interesting since we're seeing this kind of pre-market activity. Just want to point this out. And because of that assumption of things getting interesting, I have purposely not included all the levels that I found this morning. I have nothing above current price up to 578. They're currently at 574.06. They've been hanging around this area, which is part of the zone from yesterday. Uh, and if they fall, I don't want too many levels to kind of get in the way of like a panic sell kind of event. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they are getting kind of extended and, you know, anything can happen. Also coming up at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, there's a GDP data release and Jerome Powell has a speech this morning and that might rock the market at uh, 9.20 a.m. So both of these things happening before the opening bell. So just saying it could get interesting. After the closing bell, we'll come back to this chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels. And any trade, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, is put into the tracking log that you see at the end of each video. That way you can see the long-term results of this approach. I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. And we're back. It's way after the market has closed. It's the next day, in fact. You see it's 8.09 a.m. This is Friday morning. I had a dinner thing after work, and it ran late. And I just decided not to make the video last night around midnight. Do it in the morning. I woke up to no power, storm raging outside. So I'm coming to you courtesy of a generator and a hotspot. But I want to get this video out so I can do Friday's um, pre-market video. Pretty straightforward. So let's just adjust the levels really fast. So here's where you would have had the levels as prices coming down into 573.07. That's the operating level. They came up close, uh, 10 cents away, in fact. The low here at 9.56 in the morning was 573.17, 10 pennies away, took off. In my book, that's a near miss, and I don't trust the level anymore. And I'll show you on the trade that I took. I recorded this that I just left it alone. I did a few other things. I actually sold and wrote this down, but just playing by the rules, that would have been that would not have been in the cards. You would have not taken this trade and done nothing until they got down to the next level. And 571.19, I think I actually had mine at 571.20. Anyway, somewhere in that neighborhood was a long trade and they bounced and that's your one base hit and you really don't mess with these levels again you never got high enough for a short trade on a recycle of this 573.02 would become 572.97 i guess but anyway that's where you would have went short if they got back up there and they never did it so we'll take a look at trades that i took a uh, little little unorthodox but they worked out pretty well so you'll notice it's uh, 9 48 in the morning and paying attention to this level, this is my adjusted level. I'll speed up here a little bit so you can see they, they came up close. I made the level dotted just to tell me that I don't want to trade it anymore. But I left these uh, fumble threshold and profit objective levels on there just to see if they would, like that would have triggered the trade had I taken it. And I just wanted to see would they come up and would have given me the base hit. And they didn't. And this is kind of why I like to not take levels when I get a near miss like this. Because oftentimes they won't. At some point, I actually went short. They got under the level, came back up into it. I think it was this first time here. There we go. Just one contract. I really wanted to be more on the short side today, so I was okay to do this. And that was a pretty quick trade. So there's one trade in the bag. You know, just a four-point base hit with one contract. No big deal. And then 
when they came down, bought two. There we go. I bought two down here and took one off at a base hit, intending to trail the remaining contract higher, and that did not happen. In fact, they stopped me out at a negative 137.50. So it kind of just ate up most of the profit on that trade. But I really had made my mind up just to be on the short side if I could today. Or not today. This was yesterday. This was uh, Thursday. And so I wasn't really looking to get big bounces in the long trade. So I'm not really sure why I did a trailer. I should have just taken the entire thing off at a base hit. So I did another short trade when they got under this level. This is not something I normally do. That's why I said it's kind of unorthodox. Here, I'll back up and show you. They got under the level. I thought, all right, so they're kind of weak. I expected them to go down, maybe fill this gap, which is a level that I did not put on the board. Remember in, this, on, in the pre-market video, I said there are levels that I did chose not to include, and that was one of them. But I use it as a target, you'll see later, when I adjusted this. So what I ended up doing, I'm short one, and then I added to the position when they got up a little higher. A little bit of a gamble, but I was still more confident on the short side, to be on the short side. So now I'm short two, and this is my my um, adjusted fumble threshold. I've got this roughly four points out of the money. So if I see closes above this, certain things happen. I'm going to either reverse or close this position out. And make a decision at that point, depending on, what, uh, depending on what else is going on. But anyway, you see I have a profit target just to clear the two contracts out if they come down at this point. Because I don't really know what's going to happen at this point. But I gave it some time. And the entire time they were out of the money, I did not get my signal to reverse. So it was good. They got back into the money. Or at least under their fumble threshold. I consider that safe. And then, I'll just scrub ahead here and show you. They finally came down. And it was kind of nice because they just came down and just basically gave me my uh, my profit, which is a decent amount of points, and then turned back around and went back up. So I satisfied that level, and really for the rest of the day, up until 3.15, 3.20 or so, when I stopped this recording, they were doing nothing else. Those were the only two levels they messed around with. So my trades ended up being pretty good. Three trades, kind of random, but ended up with uh, $1,200. On the plane by the rules log, you can see 573.02, not triggered because of that near miss. Taking the long trade for a base hit at 571.14 at least four points or more. And then over here, Sam's trades is the other sheet here. Uh, same thing, didn't trigger the first level or that trade at that level, but I ended up doing three trades netted around 11 points. Um, it was 1260 something dollars total before commissions. So those are my trades. I need to uh, switch gears and make the video for Friday morning to this morning. Uh, so that's it. But thanks for tuning in to today's recap. I hope you found it helpful. And if you had the levels from this morning, I'd be curious to see from Thursday morning. I'd be curious to see how you traded them. That's uh, what I have today. Thanks for watching. And uh, before the opening bell, hopefully today, Friday, I'll have these new levels on the board and we'll do this again. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.